In this video, we are going to use a gradient map to match skin colors using Affinity Felto. Before we start matching the skin color, let's make sure the images have the same brightness. We can use a luminosity helper for this. I have an asset for that, so let me drag and drop it on the image. If you want to know more about helper layers, check out my video. Link will be in the description. The image on the right is quite bright compared to the left image. We can use a brightness and contrast adjustment to tune it so that it matches the brightness of the left image. I think this is about right. We don't need the luminosity helper anymore, so let's remove it. By adjusting the brightness and the contrast, we are already much closer to the left image. As mentioned, we are going to use a gradient map adjustment to match the colors. I have a preset which I will apply, but basically it just has 5 points evenly distributed with different colors. I used red for 0%, yellow for 25%, green for 50%, blue for 75% and purple for 100%. The idea is now to mark these colors on the source image using as much from the skin area as possible. To mark them, I will just draw a rectangle with no fill. So this is where we have the strong greens, then a rectangle for blue. We don't have much purple on the skin, but here on the left there's a small area I can use. Let's find an area for yellow. I think here at the nose looks like a good candidate, and finally the red. As mentioned, I want an area in the skin. I think this part of the nose will do. Now that we have 5 rectangles, let's hide the gradient map and switch to the color picker tool. In the color picker, it is good to change the sampling area to 5x5. Five five. Now I will select a rectangle and sample the color inside the rectangle. This will update the fill of the rectangle. If you can't find a rectangle, just give it a stroke color and increase the stroke width. This will help you to see where the rectangle is located. Let's continue to pick the fill colors for the remaining two rectangles. Excellent. I'm now going to turn back on the gradient map and change the gradient colors. Let's start with red. I will click on the color and with the color picker, I will select the color inside the rectangle in the red area. Then we need to repeat the same steps for the other colors. Slowly by slowly, the colors will disappear and once I have replaced the last color, we will get this kind of a sepia look. We don't need the rectangles anymore, and to hide them I will select the rectangles, group them and disable the group. Optionally, we can go back to the initial brightness and contrast adjustment to fine tune the right image to be more in sync with the left image. Now, this color map we have should only apply to the right image, so I will move it down so that it is no longer affecting the left image. The next step is to mask it to the skin area. To speed things up and not bore you with masking, I already created a mask and stored it as a spare channel. Let me use that and apply the mask to the gradient map. Awesome! Our subject has much more skin color. Depending on the look you are going for, you can change the blend mode. For example, soft light works usually well, or just the color blend mode. In this case, I'm happy with the normal blend mode. But I do think it is a bit too much, so I'm going to lower the opacity to around 60 to 70%. Even though the skin color has more color in it, it usually feels a bit unnatural as the skin colors are not in harmony with the rest of the image. And also, if you look closely, it misses some warmth. For this reason, I usually add a color balance adjustment and add a bit of yellow and red to the midtones. This just makes sure that everything blends in more naturally. Let's have a look at the before and here is the after. Not bad at all. A final suggestion would be to adjust the blend range of the gradient map adjustment, so that the effect on the darker areas is a bit less. In the next video, I will share another interesting method to achieve a similar or even better results. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Thanks again for tuning in and until the next video.